Last lesson what we took, the previous lesson, is we took Usul uh, al-Fiqh bi'atibari mufradayh. We broke Usul al-Fiqh into two. So we said Usul and Fiqh, what it means individually. We finished that, we tackled it, we got over and done with. Then we swiftly moved on to um, Ahkam al sharia We define what Ahkam means linguistically and technically. And then we defined it, what it meant um, technically. And then we mentioned that the, 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 uh, the types of ahkam, uh, ahkam there are. Uh, or the, the definition of it, we said uh, technically was what? Talabu ma fihi mashaqah. Doing that which has been requested for you, but there's a burden in it for you. Then we said that the talab is two types, talabu fi'lin and talabu tarq. Uh, we said that talabu fi'lin is two types. Uh, if it's على وجه الإلزام meaning in a forceful manner it is wajib if it's in a preferred manner then it becomes mandub and then we said طلب ترك which is the second one and we said it's two types على وجه الإلزام or على وجه الأفضلية if it's على وجه الإلزام then we said it's haram or we said if it's على وجه الأفضلية it is مكروه then we mention تخير which is مباح and those five we said together, which is uh, wajib and mandub, haram and makruh, and then the last one which is makruh, uh, mubah, sorry. Those five we said they are called ahkam al-shar'iyyatu taklifi Then we said in the book, the shaykh mentions two additional ones, which are um, sahih and fasid. And we said those two are ahkam al wadiya But we said that the shaykh left three others. Which is a shart, a sabab, and a mana. And we explain all of that. Um, so we did take ahkam, a shar'iya, um, a taklifi is five. Today we're going to start from the first one of those five, which is al wajibu. Al wajibu. So we're in al ahkam, a shar'iya, a taklifi. Al wajibu, wajib. فَالْوَاجِبُ Wajib is مَا يُثَابُ عَلَى فِعْلِهِ It is that which you get rewarded by doing the action. وَيُعَاقَبُ And you are punished عَلَى تَرْكِهِ In leaving it. So wajib means what? Ha. And Imam Abu Mu'alim al-Juayni in his Kitab al-Waraqat He says that the wajib is what? مَا يُثَابُ عَلَى عَلَى فِعْلِهِ You get rewarded by doing it. And you are punished by what? And you are punished by leaving it. First of all, this definition, the ta'rif of wajib to be that, the uh, fuqaha, they like it. This is how the fuqaha define the word wajib. But this definition, it is defining it by its ruling, not by defining its reality. It is defining it by its ruling. Meaning, what is the... What is the ruling that comes out of doing wajib. That you get rewarded for it. Huh? That you get rewarded by doing it. And that you're punished if you leave it off. That's the ruling that comes out from wajib. So the definition here, brothers, is the definition, defining it by what? Bil rasm or bil hukm. It's by defining it by its rasm, its, uh, its effects or its rulings. But it's not by defining it الحقيقه والماهيه the reality of it ha ah. the define it in its reality that the ulama define it is um, they say it is ما طلب الشارع it is what the shari the sharia the, the legislator the kitab and the sunnah have requested for you to do ما طلب الشارع فعلا it is what the Sharia, the Kitab and the Sunnah have requested for you to do ala wajhin ilzam, in a forceful manner. That's what wajib is in its definition. That is the reality of it. Ah. And the ulama of manatika, the, mantiq, the ulama of ilm al they don't define something like that. And defining something in its rulings is not right. In its correct meaning. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْأَخْضَرِي in his Kitab Sulamu al-Murawnaq فِي عِلْمِ الْمَنْطِقِ he says, he says, 
وعندهم من جملة المردود أن تدخل الأحكام أن تدخل الأحكام في الحدود which means what is rejected وعندهم من جملة المردود from the things that are rejected according to the علماء of منطق the منطقيين is what أن تدخل الأحكام that you put the ruling in the definition of something it's ruling you define it inside the thing which you're defining it the reason why it's rejected is because pay attention uh, this is usul fiqh is very tough you need to focus the ulama they say al hukm ala shay'un to put a ruling on something far'un first of all they, they have to know what you're putting the ruling on right mm. to place a ruling on something you have to first know what it is right if you've put the ruling into the definition, how are you going to know what's going to happen? Consistency is going to be going on all day. You're going to be speaking about the ruling and that the definition is going to be consistent. So what you do is define it first and then the ruling will be known. So the best definition is It is what the Sharia requested for you to do. That's the best definition for wajib. Uh, but the Sheikh, he didn't define it in that way. And um, uh, no problem in that regard. Because the fuqaha do it. Um, let's go to Abd Sheikh Abdul Rahman, Sheikh Abdullah ibn Salih al Fawzan, his sharah. Ah. What does wajib linguistically mean? What does it mean? Uh, linguistically. Linguistically, it means as saqit. Meaning fall. The word wajib in Arabic language is known as fall, fall, when you fall down, fall. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in the Quran, فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا Allah is talking about the hadi, the slaughtering of the camel. Pay attention. This is the sharia, the way he does it. How do you slaughter the camel? What you do is, you tie its left leg. What do you do? You tie its left leg and you make it stand up. So how is it standing? It's standing with three legs. So it's going to be sideways, right? You slaughter it from the neck and it falls down on the ground. So now what happened? The slaughtering and the hitting the ground will make it die quickly. Allah says in the Quran, فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ أَيْ سَقَطَتْ When that camel falls on the ground, سَقَطَتْ It falls on the ground. فَإِذَا فَإِذَا سُورَةُ الْحَجْ 36 فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ جُنُوبُهَا مَا مَعْنَا جُنُوبُهَا It's side. فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا Eat from it. What do you find some people do? They lie it down, they slaughter it, and then what do they do? They start, before the animal is the animal's moving his leg, and he starts cutting his legs off. And they start cut, cutting the animal into pieces. It's wrong. One should not do that. Let the animal die. So what happens is that if you tie its left leg, huh? because if you don't tie its leg, what happens? It will still stand and it will move around. So you tie its leg. When you do that, it loses balance. And it hits the ground. So the hitting of the, of the ground and you cutting his throat will make it die quickly. And that's what we want. We want it to die fast and quick. Ah. So Allah is saying in the ayah, فَإِذَا وَجَبَتْ وَجَبْ وَجَبْ أَيْ سَقَطَتْ Falls on the ground. Naam. Um, in the Kitab Al-Qamus, Majduddin Al-Fayruza Abadi, uh, Majduddin Fayruza Abadi, he is a student of Imam Al-Nawawi. He said, وَجَبَ يَجِبُ وَجْبَةً سَقَطَ It is when it falls. وَالشَّمْسُ وَجْبًا وَوُجُوبًا غَابَتْ Like for example, we say, وَجَبَ الشَّمْسُ The sun fell, meaning, the sun is gone now. Ah. وَالْوَجْبَ He said, أَسَّقْطَةُ مَعَ الْهَدَّةِ أَوْ صَوْتُ السَّاقِطِ It is the noise that the thing that falls on the ground makes, جُّ That's called وَجْبَ وَقَالَ الشَّاعِرُ The poet said, أَطَاعَتْ بَنُ عَوْفٍ أَمِيرًا نَهَاهُمُ عَنِ السِّلْمِ حَتَّى كَانَ أَوَّلُ وَاجِبٍ he said, Ata'at Banu Awfin. But it's a man who's talking about the tribe of Banu Awf. He said, Ata'at, they obeyed. Banu Awfin obeyed. Ah. Amiran, a leader of this. Ata'at, they obeyed. Banu Awfin, Banu Awf obeyed. Amiran, a ruler and a leader of this. Naha humu, who stopped them from what? Who stopped them from an silmi. He stopped them from finding a treaty with their enemies. He said, don't have no treaty with them. Fight with them. He would protect, he'd stop them from what? From looking for what? A silm. Silm is a treaty. Ha. Ah. And peace. He stopped them from peace. He said, don't go for peace. Don't resort to peace. Fight. 
Uh, and they obeyed him in it. So what happened? Hatta kana awwala wajibin. Until that tribe, Banu Auf, they became the first one to fall on the ground. Hatta, uh, hatta until kana awwala wajibin. Wajibin, ay, saqitin. That's what it means. That fell on the ground. Meaning in the battle, they got, they got killed by the enemy. So they sort of resulted to what? The peace that was given to them. So what it means is that linguistically, by the, linguistically, the word wajib means what? What does it mean linguistically? To fall. We mentioned it from the Quran, huh? and we mentioned it from the Arab poets, and also Fayruza Abad, Majdudin Fayruza Abadi. We said, and uh, technically, the correct definition is Ma Talab Shari'u. It is what the legislator. Who's the legislator? Allah and His Messenger. They are the two that legislate. No one else should legislate. Allah and His Messenger. They legislate. Huh? But we won't wait. Ala wajhil ilzam in a forceful manner. That is what wajib is. Ah. There's another also, there's another um, issue that rises in the de this definition. In this definition. And what is that? The definition here, it says, مَا يُثَابُ عَلَى فِعْلِهِ That which you're rewarded in doing it. Sahih? مَا يُثَابُ That which you are rewarded in doing it. Now, that itself is a question. Because... The person only gets rewarded for what he does if he does it in titalat, with the intention. He only gets rewarded if he does something with what? Imtithalan. If he doesn't do it in titalan, meaning with the intention, does he get rewarded for it? Like he doesn't get rewarded for it, from it. So it has to be done with what? He has to be imtithal. So he be rewarded. And also, brothers, remember that the word thawab, it can mean... Thawab, ma yuthabu. Thawab can mean what? It can mean that which is what? Being rewarded with good or it can be, reward, be rewarded with bad. It can be both. But the, remember that ghaliban, originally, in its essence, it means what? And al itlaqi, when it's generalized, it means good. But if the context moves it from that meaning, it will take that meaning. Such as Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He said in the Quran, hal thuwiba al-kuffaru, thuwiba, thawab. So al kufar here means what? The disbelievers. That is what diverted it from its meaning, which is what? Good. Also, uh, the ayah where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he says, قُلْ هَلْ أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِشَرِّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَعَنَهُ اللَّهُ وَغَضِبَ عَلَيْهِ وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُ وَجَعَلَ مِنْهُمُ الْقِرَدَةَ وَالْخَنَازِيرَ وَعَبَدَ الطَّاوُوتِ So in this ayah also, Allah says, بِشَرِّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ مَثُوبَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Reward? Is that good or evil here? It's evil. Because Allah says, لا مَنْ لَعَنَهُ اللَّهُ وَغَضِبْ عَلِيهِ But here, it means good. So, مَا يُثَابُ عَلَى فِعْلِي So, what should we say if this is not? Because Allah, so we say, مَا يُثَابُ عَلَى فِعْلِهِ إِمْتِثَالًا إِمْتِثَالًا If the person does it to follow the Prophet, he does it with sincerity. Ah. That next part is also a questionable part, which is, وَيُعَاقَبُ عَلَى تَرْكِيهِ Allah sometimes punishes the people, what? And sometimes he doesn't want to. So how can we say well, عَقَبُ عَلَى تَرْكِي That you'll be punished for leaving it. We will say uh, وَيَسْتَحِقُ He deserves وَيَسْتَحِقُ uh, تَارِكُ الْعِقَابِ The one who leaves it deserves to be punished. Uh, deserves. Does that make sense? That's what uh, the scholars say. Some scholars like Ibn Farqah who has a sharh on waraqat. You know what he said? He said this definition is not wrong. The last part وَيُعَقَبُ عَلَى تَرْكِي He said there's nothing wrong with it. Are you guys with me? He said there's nothing wrong with it. Because he said, Wa yu'aqabu, it is punished ala tarki by leaving it. He said there's nothing wrong with it. Why? Because he said, isn't there going to be a group of people Allah is always going to punish? Yes, there are always going to be believers. There's a narration that has shown us that there are always going to be a group of Muslims who are going to be punished for leaving wajib. So he said, it's sufficient that it refers to them, those ones that are going to be punished. And not necessarily everyone. Does that make sense? So, anyways, it's better to say, huh? it is better to say, وَيَسْتَحِقُّ تَارِكُ الْعِقَابِ The one who leaves it uh, will be de will deserve to be punished. Deserve to be uh, punished. Um, brothers, the wajib is, is it the same as fard? Do they mean the same wajib, al-fard, al-lazim? Al Muhattam, is it all the same? Mm -hmm. Hat, all of them mean the same. Except the Hanafiyyah, 
who believe there's a difference between wajib and what? Wajib and fard. They believe there's a difference between the two. And the Jumhur, According to the Jumhur, it is not correct to put any differences between uh, the two. Uh, and that they are the same. The Hanafis, they say that the difference between the two is that the wajib is ma thubita bidalilin They say that the wajib is something that is what? It is based upon uh, speculation and assumption. The way the evidence is brought is by way of assumption and speculation. But they, they say the fard is ma thabata, it's anything that's been affirmed by what? Bidalilin qat'i, a clear cut evidence is brought it forward. But the ulama they say, the question is, is that if the person leaves a wajib and if the person leaves a fard, is it the same? They said yes. So some scholars they said the ikhtilaf with us is ikhtilaf lafdi. It's just ikhtilaf lafdi. It's just wordings and they, 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 they try to... But in the reality, there is nothing different. Brothers, the wajib is of um, six types. Ah, How many types? Aqsamul wajibu. ينقسم الواجب بحسب الاعتبار إلى ستة أقسام. Look at it from different angles. It's six types. It's different types. The first one is بِعْتِبَارِ الْفِعْلِ The first one is بِعْتِبَارِ الْفِعْلِ the, We're looking at three, look what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the first one, which is the action. The action itself. Huh. We're looking at the wajib from many angles. There's six. Common is many, many people know only one type. That's the one that people know only. It's the very common. There's five others that people don't know of. And each one of those five types come out of it. Two types come out from each one. Pay attention. The first one is, it is بِعْتِبَارِ الْفِعْلِ أَمَا بِعْتِبَارِ ذَاتِي The action is what we're looking at. From the angle of the action. The action. And that's two types. That's two types. وَاجِبُ uh, in, in terms of the action. And that is وَاجِبُ مُعَيَّنٌ it is, It's an it's a obligation, something that's mandatory, uh, specifically. It's a specific wajib. It's called wajib al muayyan. So it's, now we look first, first type we're looking at. Brothers, the first type, two fall under it. It's the action. So we're looking at it from the angle of the action and that's two types. And that's still the first one. The first one is bi'atibari al-fi'l. And how much is it? Bi'atibari. Uh, bi'atibari al-fi'l. And it's al wajib al muayyan. Wajib muayyan means what? A wajib which is specified. Ah. Specified, such as, for example, no other wajib. الواجب, that type is the wajib. لا يقوم غيره مقامه. No other wajib can take its place. Allah told you to pray the salah. You can't say, you know what? I'm gonna fast instead. Or you're gonna say, you know what? I'm going to give sadaqah. You know, what? I'm gonna do hajj. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna give all my wealth out. No. That wajib, you have to do salah. It's specified. That's the only way you can come with. You have no other options. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This action. The second one of this first type is, this is the first type, the second type of, the second part of it is al wajib al mubham. It is the wajib that's not specified. And that is two types. The wajib al mubham is two types. Which is what? A wajib that is not specified. But it's what? It's it's mahsur. It's what? It's mahsur. Mahsur means it's you've got a choice between that which the Sharia has pointed. So it's not you're free to go wherever you want. The Sharia points for you. Huh? It gives you types. And it gives you the choice to choose from those types. But you're still narrowed down in a, in a number. Mahsur means, huh? 
you're not allowed to go out of those numbers. But you've still got, you've got the flexibility of choosing. Whereas the first part, you're not allowed to. There's only one type you're allowed to come with. Does that make sense? Such as what? Such as the kafara. The kafara, the expiation. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, ay ayah, and 89, Allah says, فَكَفَّارَتُهُ the, the expiation is what? إِطْعَامُ عَشَرَةِ masakin, Giving ten and poor people uh, food. مِنْ أَوْسَطِ مَا تُطْعِمُونَ food أو كِسْوَتُهُمْ Or giving them clothing. أو تَحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةِ Or freeing a slave. Huh? فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ فَصِيَامُ ثَلَاثِ تَأَيَّامِ Anyone who is unable to do that, what does he do? He fasts. Three days. Are you all with me? Are you all? So look at that. Are you allowed to choose anything outside that? No. Exactly. But you are, have you got a choice? Yeah. Now, again, the wajib al the wajib that's not specified, huh, has one that you don't, you can choose. It's, it's openly, which is the third type within that one. Are you with me? Mm-hmm. The, this, are you all with me? No. We're in the first. We're in the first type, which is Atibar al fi'li the i'tibar al-fi'li, we said that it's divided into how many? Al-mu'ayyan ala al-mubham. We said the mubham is two types. Mubham mahsur. Mubham? Mahsur. Mahsur meaning specified. You're, you can only choose from those. Are you with me? Yeah. And then now it's called al-mubham ghayr al-mahsur. Ghayr al-mahsur means what? It's not specified. Aha. You can choose from, uh, from whatever you want. It's no problem. Such as what? Are you all with me? Mm-hmm. The freeing of the neck. Are you guys freeing of the freeing of the neck? Are you guys with me? Are you free when you want to free a neck or free a slave? Are you narrowed down to choose which slave or you can choose whichever slave you want to free? No, yeah, it's up to you. You're not narrowed down on anything. It's ghayr mahsur. It's ghayr mahsur. You, you're free. It's up to you. Choose whichever one you wish and you desire. That's the first type, brothers. That is the what? It's the first type. The second type we're going to w- move on to, which is bi'atibari al waqt, looking at it from the angle of time, and that's two types. And that is what? It's two types. <coughs> the first one is al mubayyak. Al al mubayyak. It is. The timing is very narrow down. You are, um, it is the wajib, wajib الذي, الذي it is the wajib that has a specific time. And you can't do the same action many times that day. This is called al mudayyak mudayyak. Did I say mu'ayyan? al mudayyak means what? It's tightened on you. The word mudayyak means tight. We used the word last time. What was it called? Somebody used a nice word when I was teaching before. The word mubayyak. Restricted. restricted. That's a good that's a word. It, they're restricted. You're restricted. You have restricted time. Such as, for example, fasting of Ramadan. Can you do two Ramadans? Two, can you fast twice a day? Huh? Can you try? No, you're, not, you, you're restricted. You can only fast once. Such as, can you do more than one hajj a year? So that's not, that is, uh, you're restricted. The second one is muwassa, the one that you're not restricted. Ah, the timing, you're not restricted. Restriction here, we're talking about timing. You're not restricted to anything. Ah, the timing, you're not restricted. And that's two types. It's called muwassa. It's called what? al wajib al-muwassa. It is what? It is not um, restricted to anything. And it's two types. The first one is mahsurun, it's called al-wajib, al-muwassa, al-mahsur bayna waqtayni. But it's, 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 sorry, it is muwassa, it's muwassa, meaning you're not restricted, huh? but you have a, you're limited in a particular time. So free, you're, you are not restricted in the sense where you can do any time within that time frame, but there's a time frame that you're given. Does that make sense? So, does that make sense? You're free within that time. You can do whatever you want. You can choose whatever time you want to do it. And then there's another one which is what? No. The, your muwassa here is actually open. No, like, you're allowed to 
from the first one is the salah the first one is what the salah the salah is what it's muwassa because the salah has a time which is called a uh, time which it enters are you with me so that we, there's time beginning it enters that person is fulfilled the worship and there's also a time where it's what which is the time which is the end so that the t person has within that time, right? From the time it enters till the time it leaves. You're you've got that time. Are you with me? Good. If a person prays at the last time, he's, is, he, is he free to pray at the end last minute? Is he allowed to pray at the ending? He's allowed to. Is he allowed to pray at the beginning? He's allowed to. So it's wassa. Can he do other ibadat when the time of the salah is in? Can he pray sunnahs? Oh, he's free, you see. He can do whatever he wants. Does that make sense? So it's muwassa. But pay attention, brothers. This is a mas'ala which is very important. That the ulama, the khilaf occurs here. What about if a person dies? The mas'ala is muhim. Man mat, a person dies. Fi waqti wajibin muwassa'in wa lam yaf'alu. He died and the wajib was a wajib muwassa. You with me? Which is this type. He died. A person died, at, not mudayyak. Of course, if he leaves mudayyak, we've left it. We know that. Because there's only one time that you could pray. But we're talking about wasa'ah. It's large. He had a choice. He could stop praying now if he wanted to. He could pray later if he wants to. But he dies within that wasa. It's two types. The scholar is divided into two. Let's say it's two types. If he dies, so if he leave, if he left it, meaning he left to, he left to pray. He didn't pray. He chose to leave the salah. But aziman, he decided, man tarakahu, aziman, adamu adai. A person dies. Without, he, he didn't have the intention. He didn't want to. He didn't, he wasn't determined. Man tarakahu, aziman, adamu adai, to fulfill it. If he dies, that person dies, at the beginning of the time, are you with me? Or he dies in the middle, or he dies at the end. It doesn't matter. He's a kafir because he didn't want to do it. Wadah. Even though it's muasa. The second one is. So he will be held. He will be held account for that salah. But a person. Man a person left it. He left. He left it prayer. He delayed it. He left it. Azim al adahu. He had the. He, he had the decision in his mind that he's going to fulfill it. He had the mind. فَإِذَا مَاتْ If that person died وَكَانَ الْبَاقِي مِنَ الْوَقْتِ He left the salah. The salah finished. So this is what they say. So he left the salah. If when he died He died وَكَانَ الْبَاقِي مِنَ الْوَقْتِ But there was remaining from the time كَافِيَ لِلْإِلْتِمَامِ الْوَاجِبِ There was remaining from that time enough for him to do the wajib. So there was a bit of time left that he could have done the prayer, finish it off, just before the Salah's time is about to finish. He died? Ha. Huh. He dies and he's not Asi. Because he had a decision. He, had a, he wanted to pray it. Walayatham. And he's not going to be a sinner for it. Because he died within the time frame that he was permitted. وَإِذَا مَاتَ But if he dies. وَكَانَ الْوَقْتُ الْبَاغِ غَيْرَ كَافِ لِلْإِنْتِمَامِ But he dies. Ha. Huh. He dies. And... He couldn't have established a prayer because he was about to finish. It was actually over. The salah time was finishing. If he stood up, by the time he stood up, it would have finished. Then here, he dies as a sinner and a disbeliever. And that will be held against him. That's the first, that's the second type. So it's important that we learn that. It's a very important point. Um, the second type, brothers, which is what's known as um, al muwassa al mutlaq. The muwassa, which is what? So you guys done the muwassa uh, al mahsura, right? Bain al waqtain, sorry. Bain al waqtaini. It's mahsura, bain al waqtain. Here, it is al wajib al muwassa al mutlaq. Mutlaq means what? It's open. Such as what? Al kafara. Expiation. The person, he is. He has his choice to give it. 
he has that, as long as he doesn't die, he has to give that kafara expiation. Some of the ulama, they say, no, he has to do it straight away, and then they use the evidence, fastabukul khayrat, hasten to the good. But he can do it matasha, whenever he wills to. Good. The third type is kud bi'atibar al fa'il. So pay attention. The first one we looked at what? We looked at the action. The second we looked at what? The time. The third we're looking at what? The person who's doing it. Bi'atibar al fa'il. The person who's doing it. It's two types. This is the one that the people know. The people are aware of this type of wajib. They don't know the rest. Which is called what? Bi'atibar al fa'il. The person who's doing it. And this is two types. Wajib aini. Wajib which is obligatory on every single individual. Ah. You as an individual have to come with it. You can't ask your cousin to do it for you. You can't ask somebody else to do it. You have to do it for yourself. Ah. Ah. وَيُنْذَرُ فِي إِلَى الْفَاعِلِ فَإِنَّ مَسْؤُولَ عَنْ إِتْمَامِ كَسَرَوَاتِ Like the five daily prayers. Your cousin cannot pray for you. Your uncle cannot pray for you. Your mom cannot pray for you. Imagine. <laughs> imagine your parents had to, to you, you could pray for somebody. A lot of brothers would have their parents telling them, pray, 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 pray. Ah. Pray dhur for me. Pray asr for me. Da'ab. So that, that nobody could do. 